Welcome back to another video. In this lecture, we are going to have a look into various web analytics terms. And we are also going to look at in-depth definition of each of these terms. So in this video, I am going to show you examples. So by the end of this video, you will be able to understand what each of these terms means and what is the difference between these terms. So let's get started. I just log in into my Google Analytics account and as soon as you log in, you can see here that some of the terms are right in front of you. So we see terms such as users, session, bounce rate, session duration. And if you scroll a bit little down, you can see terms like traffic channel, source medium, referrals. And there is a session called audience. If I go into audience, you will be able to see terms like users new users sessions number of session per user page views page view per session average session duration and bounce rate so what we will do now is that first we will list out all the important terms and definitions that we use it in web analytics and then we will go ahead and look at each one of them in depth so what i have done is that i have done my own bit of research and i have come up with 14 different terms these are the most important terms that is frequently used in analytics if you go ahead and look for metrics and terms and analytics sometimes people have a very long list of 50 to 100 terms but you need not go that level of them right now as we are learning analytics these are the most important terms so let's go ahead and have an in-depth look at each of these terms the first one is annotations. Annotations are nodes that help us understand traffic patterns. So you can go ahead and enter an annotation inside your analytics, inside your analytics account. In one of video, I'll show you how to do it. So here you can see there's an annotation called test. If there is a traffic spike in just one of these days inside your analytics account, and this spike in traffic is because of an offline campaign that you did, you might not be able to understand why this traffic spike occurred. If you are looking at your analytic account, maybe six months or one year down the line. So annotation helps us go ahead and record why this traffic spike occurred. The next one is attribution. Attribution is mostly used to understand the source of sales and revenue inside the funnel. Attribution is mainly classified into first click and last click attribution. Let's say if you consider 100 visitors been sent to your website from Facebook, 50 visitors from Twitter and 500 visitors from Google. And at the end of the day, you are having let's say 20 sales. You need to find out the sales happen from which source. Maybe all the 15 sales happen from Facebook and another 5 sales happen from Google search. So this helps you to understand that no sales happen from Twitter. So this is the first click attribution. You need to understand where the click originated from. Facebook, Twitter or Google. So what if Google is providing very less ROI and Facebook is providing good ROI? You will be able to make a decision that you have to invest more effort into paid advertising and organic activity inside Facebook because out of the 20 sales, 15 sales came from Facebook and no sales came from Twitter. So if you are investing a lot of money and energy on Twitter, so you might not want to do that because you are not able to attribute any sales back to Twitter. So that's how attribution works and attribution is important. So in this case, I have explained what is first click attribution. Last click attribution is basically what is the last page that your user goes on or what is the last click that they did just before the sales happen. So that's how attribution works. Now let's go to the next term, which is bounce rate. Bounce rate is basically the percentage of people who land on your web pages and then leave without clicking anywhere on your website. In other words, single page visitor. So they visit your website and they just leave your website. So these are called bounce visitors. As a general rule, you should try to keep your bounce rate as low as possible, which means that you are getting relevant traffic and you are able to capture people's attention and keep them on your web page. So in general, your normal healthy bounce rate is 70%. If 30% of the visitors are visiting more pages inside your website and clicking around your site, that is good. So now coming to the next term, which is conversion rate. The number of people who converted on your website 
divided by the number of people who visited your website. So this conversion can be filling out a form such as lead generation form or it could be a sale or it could be any activity as defined by you and it can also be a click. Conversion rate is usually measured for sales and leads. So here let's say I am getting 100 visitors to a web page and out of those 100 visitors 20 people has filled out a form and they have become lead. So this makes the conversion ratio 20%. The next one is dimension. Dimension is a characteristic of your data that you can use in filters. So here you can see an example where primary and secondary dimensions. Primary dimension can be keyword, source, landing page and other. So these are general dimensions that you have inside Google Analytics. Once you start using Google Analytics, you will get comfortable with what dimension means. The next one is page views. Page view is basically when a page is loaded and Google Analytics tracks the load of the page. It counts even if the same visitor come back again or refresh the page. A single user can have even 10 page view in a single session. There is no limit to amount of page views that this user can have. If a user visit your homepage and refresh the homepage 10 times, then it, it is counted as 10 page views. Then there is a term called unique page views which negates the same user visiting the same page again. Let's say a visitor visits your home page and then he visits two other pages and then he comes back to the home page. The total number of page views will be counted as 4 and the unique page view will be counted as 3 because it is the same user. The next one is session. Session is basically defined by a visit by a unique user in a window of 30 minutes. If a visitor comes to your website and spend one hour on your website, then it is counted as two sessions. So if a user visits my blog morning once and in the evening once, then it is also counted as two sessions. So the next one is users. Users are basically the number of unique users visiting your website. The same user visiting your website on a different day using the same device will be counted as a single user. To understand user session and page views because these are the terms which are usually confused with one another. Let's see an example. Let's say user A visits your website today. He goes through five different pages within 30 minutes. Then it is counted as one user one session with five page views. Let's say user A visits your website today twice, once in the morning and once in the evening. Then he goes through five different pages within 30 minutes in the morning and three different pages in the evening. Now it is one user, two session, eight page views. So this is how Google Analytics takes the data and reports it inside your dashboard. Many people go ahead and confuse between page views, unique page views, user and session. It is very important that you have a clear understanding of the difference between all these terms so that you will be able to present it to your employer or your agency client with confidence. Now the next one is pages per session. This is the number of pages visited on average per session in the given time frame. So here you can see this report we have different pages per session for different sources of traffic. So people who are coming from organic search have a higher page per session. And people who are coming directly have a lower pages per session. Pages per session is also called page views per session. Both are same. The next one is entrance. Entrance is the number of times visitors enter your site through a specific page or a set of pages. If I have a page which is inside my blog, not the home page, but a specific article. And if people are coming to my website directly through this page, then it is counted as an entrance. So here I have taken one particular URL and I have taken out the matrix for that particular URL inside my blog. So here you can see the page views, unique page views, average time on page, entrance, bounce rate and exit percentage. This is usually for the time frame that we define. So when you log into analytic, you will be able to define what is the time frame in the calendar. So usually it is the past one week that is shown here. You can see in the past one week that there has been 651 views. 651 new user directly coming to this page. So this particular web page is ranking well on search engine. So people are coming on my website for the first time and they are entering 
through this page and 84% of those people are also exiting from this page which means that they are not visiting further pages on my website the next one is percentage exit percentage exit is the number of exit divided by number of page views for a particular page it indicates how often user exit from that page or set of pages when they view the pages so it is the same url again so here you can see the percentage exit is 84.33 percent so this helps you to understand whether they are only interested in the content on that page or whether they are going to other pages and consuming more content the next one is source source is specific url from which the traffic has originated from it could be google.com or facebook.com source of traffic can be very lengthy and it can contain a lot of site so to solve this there is something called medium and what medium does is that medium shows you what is type of source that you are getting traffic from so here are the some example include organic referral email things like that so medium can be a lot of things even it means the same thing for example sometime for social media people use sm sometime they use social media with a space and sometime they use a word social media without space so if someone else is sending traffic to your web page and if they are using this medium in the utm tags of the url then it is ranked as different things inside the medium report so to solve this problem there is something called channels channels are basically different groups of traffic source with multiple similar mediums and channels are very standard it is developed by google analytic themselves so here you can see the different channels on the right organic search direct email social referral so medium could be social social hyphen network social hyphen media sm social space network or social space media all the above goes into the channel called social so i prefer that you don't use medium much medium is just to specify where the traffic is coming from when you are looking the report you have to look at the source and then you have to look at the channels channels give you a very clear idea and broad idea of where your traffic is coming from now we will have recap of all the 14 terms which we have discussed so the first one is annotation where you can take notes inside your analytics account then you have attribution which helps you to find out where is the source of traffic and which source of traffic actually gave you revenue then you have bounce rate so the percentage of people leaving your site without clicking on anything else is called bounce rate then we have conversion rate conversion rate is the percentage of people who are taking a specification predefined by you then you have dimensions dimension can be different type of views on how you are looking at analytic it could be landing pages it can be keyword and things like that then you have page views so every time a page load a page view is counted then you have sessions so session is a visit by a user in 30 minutes period then you have users users are unique user who are visiting from specific device so they are categorized as user page per session so the amount of page views in a particular session on average is page per session then you have entrance number of people coming to a specific web page in a given frame of time then you have percentage exit which is the percentage of people exiting from a specific web page after they have entered that web page then you have source source can be specific url it can be google.com facebook.com you can go ahead and define source when you are driving traffic using url parameters then you have medium there are multiple different mediums such as cpc organic email and sometimes there could be different medium terms such as social media sm etc but they all mean the same and they are categorized into channels there are six different channel as defined by google this includes organic search direct email referral social and others so that's it for this video thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next video hello friends in this video i will show you how to set up ip filters inside your google analytic account setting up ip filter is important because if you are visiting your own website and you will be probably be visiting it a lot of time throughout the day 
so you don't want your visits to count as visitors inside analytics so what i'll do is i'll search for my ip address so for that i need to go to google and search what is my ip and this will give me my ip address this is my static ip address static means it will be same but sometime it is dynamic means the first two set will remains the same and the last two sets will keep on changing so if it is a dynamic ip address i will i will show you how to add it in analytics so i we need to copy this ip address so let's copy this okay and let's go to analytic account and here we need to click on admin and here we need to click on all filters and we need to click on add filter here we need to give a name for our filter so i'll give a name own ip address and filter type will be predefined so here select filter type we need to select exclude select source or destination we need to click on we need to select traffic from ip address select expression uh, we need to click on select that are equal to and here we need to paste the ip address and apply filter to view all website data we need to add this and before i click on save i'll show you for dynamic also so suppose if your ip address is dynamic so you need to remove this last two set okay and instead of data equal to we will select that begins with it means that the ip address that begins with this set will be excluded okay right now uh, i'll keep this because my ip is static and we need to click on save so this filter has been saved and one more thing this filter we have to set up early on as soon as you set up your analytic account because this does not apply to historical data this will apply only to the new data that's coming in after the filter has been set up so always filter uh, always create a filter as soon as you create the analytic account so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye welcome back to another video in this video we are going to talk about annotations if we go inside audience and if we click on overview so here is an arrow so if i click on this arrow so this panel opens and here you can see an option to create a new annotations so let's click on this and now we need to select a particular date okay so i'll select 8th may so I'm in the date range between 1st May to 16th May. You can select whatever date you want, but this is for a uh, demo purpose. So I've selected 1st May to 16th May. So before we create an annotation, I want to show you that uh, on 7th May, we were having four users and on 8th May, it has uh, gone to eight users. So it is almost double. So why, it, uh, so why we had an increase in users? Maybe we have done some activity Maybe we have run an ad on that particular day, a remarketing ad. That could be a reason of increase in traffic. Or maybe we have posted a new blog on the website. This could be a reason. So we don't remember all these activities, what we have done to get an increase in traffic. So for that reason, we can add a small note here. Okay. So we can select the date, which I have already selected. And I will write remarketing. add hyphen traffic increase and here you can see uh, we can share with other people who have access of this google analytic account or we can select private if we don't want to share it okay and then we need to click on save so here you can see there's a label of private and this note is been added for this particular date so let's close this panel and whenever you see the stat you can find this note by clicking this small icon here okay on 8th may you can see a small icon here and if you click on this so you can see the note
so in this way you can add notes on any particular day you want so that you can remember what activity you have done so it is a kind of small note which will make you remember of the activities but there are few limitation like if you export the data from here if you export the data so you will not find the annotation in that data okay and the second limitation is that it is only applicable for the selected date and it is not applicable for the weeks and months so if i click on week and if you click on this arrow and if you click on this notation so here you can select only date and i don't think so you can select a week okay so you are not we are not able to select the week and even for month we are not able to select the month if i select if i from april to may if i apply the date range so here you can see we cannot create a notation for month okay it is only showing date so that is a uh, second drawback but that is fine uh, but overall this is very handy if you are running an ad campaign or email campaign so you will able to know the increase on traffic on that particular day for your website so i hope you understood the concept of uh, annotations and uh, this is it for this lecture and and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye welcome back to another video in this video we will see how can we select audience for remarketing so where are we going to find behavior of audience so we can find it through google analytics right so we will see how we can use google analytics and understand the behavior of audience so that we can create a particular audience and then we can use that audience for remarketing so for that we need to go to admin so let's click on admin and here we need to go to audience definition where we can define our audience then we need to click on audience so here is the section to create audience okay so if i click on audience source so here uh, we need to select all website data because we need the data from the whole website right then we need to click on next step so uh, here we don't see any other options but because uh, we have not enabled the remarketing so first we will do a basic enabling of remarketing then we will again create a new audience so that you can find different options so let me click because this is the first time we are visiting this audience section so we need to click on next and here you can see only there is one option all users but in the next time when i'll come back then you can see different options so and the destination the third step we need to select best computer chairs okay so so we have selected best computer chairs and then uh, in your case it will be your website so let's click on enable and now we need to go back to the audience page so here is the audience created it is default audience so let's create a new audience okay let's let me go back to audiences okay so so here is the option to create a new audience so let's click on this so this is the whole website we need to select the whole website okay then we need to click on next step so here you can see uh, previously when i uh, was in this section there was only one option all users but here you can see there are different options okay so in this options so you can select an audience who have visited the website for the first time or you can select an audience who visited a particular page of a website maybe that particular page can be a thank you page or maybe it can be a cart page if you have an e-commerce website and in this way we can select audience we can target new users who have visited our website so we can show them ads even we can target returning users okay or we can select all users as we did for the last time so in my case i'll select returning users the people who have returned to our website so here uh, users over last 7 days is zero and your membership duration uh, we can select uh, whatever days we want so but i'll keep it 30 days okay then we need to uh, write a name give a name for the audience so i'll write we visited users now then we need to click on next step and your destination will be again best computer chairs and then we need to click on publish and then we need to go back to our audience 
so here you can see uh, i have created new uh, audience and in that the name of the audience will be revisited user and the type will be returning visitors and uh, membership is open and type is analytics so in this way you can uh, create new audiences and uh, use them for remarketing uh, your ad campaign so i hope you got the concept of remarketing and this is it for this lecture and i'll see you in the next video Welcome back to another video. In this video, I am going to talk about one of the most important concepts in Google Analytics and that is UTM parameters. So when you are building links and when you are promoting the links, you can add it with something called UTM parameters, which are parameters on the URL itself, which helps you to track the source, medium and campaign name. In the previous video, we have talked about attribution. So UTM parameters are the one which helps in attribution a lot. So first, let's look at why it is called UTM parameters. So UTM is nothing but urchin tracking module, urchin tracking module. OK. And before Google Analytics was created, this software was called urchin software. So here you can see it was called urchin software. And urchin software Corp was acquired by Google in April 2005 forming Google Analytics. So the truth about Google Analytics is that Google Analytics was not built from scratch. Google acquired this analytics software program and Google built Google Analytics on top of it. So because it was called Urchin, UTM is called Urchin Tracking Module and the name never changed. So it is still called UTM Parameters or UTM Builder. So to put this in action, so what you need to do is that you can go and search for something like UTM Builder. I'll search UTM Builder. Or you can even search UTM links. But I'll go with UTM Builder because if I type UTM Builder, it is the first link which I need. So it is called campaign URL builder. So when you are promoting certain links to your website from different source of traffic such as paid advertising or Facebook or Twitter, it is advisable to build UTM parameters into the link. So building UTM parameter is very simple. All you need to do is that just paste the URL that you are going to promote on in this field. Okay. So I'll copy one of the link from my website. So best computer chairs dot in and let's say i want to promote best pc gaming chairs so i'll just copy this link and i'll go to campaign url builder and i'll paste it here so this is the link which i want to promote so i want to promote different traffic medium so campaign source will be different kind of source like social media or paid ad from google adwords email so i am just going to add campaign source as social and campaign medium which can be facebook and campaign name would be best pc chairs okay ppc and these two are optional. So if you want, you can put, but it is not required. So now, as you can see, the data I have added here has been attached to the link here. So you can just copy this link and share on your Facebook. Or you can even convert this URL into a short URL. Okay. So this is a link which I, I wanted to share on Facebook, but what if I want to share on Twitter? So here I need to change it to Twitter. So here you can see this UTM medium has been changed to Twitter. Similarly, you can add various social media name here and just go ahead and copy the link and paste it in their respective social media. And if you want to share it in an email, so in medium, you can just write email and for campaign source, you can write subscriber. And the campaign name would be same. And then you can send email newsletter to your subscriber having the link in it. And if you want to share it on Google ads like PPC ads or display advertisement, 
you can just write here paid in campaign source and the medium can be SERP means search engine result pages or if you want to share it on display network so you can write display so whatever data you write here it is attached to this link and you can share this link and then you can check the report in google analytic so let's go on google analytic and you can click on acquisition and if you click on overview sorry you need to click on campaign and here you need to click on all campaign so right now i am not promoting this url so i can, cannot see any result but if you share the link of your website so here is the result you will be looking at like if you can click on source so it will give you the data according to it if you click on medium it will give the data according to it and even you can add secondary dimension okay so users browser city you can check from which city your users are looking at your url so this is how you can use utm parameters and this is how utm parameters work so this is it for this lecture and i'll see you in the next video welcome back to another video in this video we will see how to create goals and funnels in google analytics for that we need to click on admin and in admin section we need to click on goals and here we need to click on new goals so there are different type of goals and there are pre-made templates or even you can create a custom goal but uh, we will see the pre-made templates so there are different type of goals you can see place an order create an account submit content if there is a uh, goal for inquiries like view more find a location upcoming event see deals add to favorite share social connect newsletter sign up add to cart so in my case i will select newsletter okay so once the user is on the website uh, there will be a pop up for sign up for newsletter and if someone fills the form and if it is redirected to thank you page then my goal goal is achieved so once i select the goal i need to click on once i select the template then i need to click on continue so here we need to give the name of goal so newsletter sign up is okay if you if you want to change the name so you can okay but i'll keep it newsletter sign up and we need to select destination okay so the id let it be like that only and we need to click on continue and here we need to give the destiny url so in our case it will be thank you page okay and it should be equal to thank you there are different options here begins with and regular expression i'll tell you why we write begins with let's say uh, in some cases uh, the url the destination url after the payment or before the payment is something like this question mark and there is uh, some numeric value so in that case you can write begins with begin with thank you and then whatever the value it is okay and uh, in some cases there are url which contains category and different type of categories so in that case you can select regular expression so in my most of the cases i select regular expression only so i will keep regular expression and coming to value uh, you can give value for your uh, goal let's say if i am selling online courses and uh, on one sale if i can generate one dollar so i can give the value as one dollar that one goal achieved one dollar achieved so in that case you can uh, put the value of that goal but in our case it is just a newsletter sign up so we don't require so i'm keeping it off and funnels are the steps which we can give before the final final destination 
In our case, we don't require as we have selected newsletter sign up, but for demo purpose, we will create it. So in the name, we will uh, write cart. Okay, so if you are selling an online course, the user will first, the first step would be add to cart of that course. Okay, so the URL will be cart. And then there will be another step after adding the cart to the course, uh, the user will view the cart. Okay, so view cart. And here the URL will be view cart. And the next step would be checkout page. So checkout. And the last step would be thank you page. Okay, so in this way you have you can create a funnel and then you can verify, but for verification of the data, uh, but for verification of this goal, you should have a data of over the past seven days. So in our case, we don't have the data for the past seven days. Then we need to click on save and once we click on save so it will end up on this page where you can find your goal newsletter goal id is five goal set one destination destination goal type is destination last past seven days we have uh, we don't have the data for last seven days we have just created the goal right now so here you can uh, make it on or off so if you want to keep your goal on so you need to toggle this. If you don't want your goal, so you can just keep it off, but you can't delete the goal, okay? So that is one thing uh, you need to keep in your mind that uh, you can't delete the goal. You can keep it off, but you can't delete it. So this is it, how you can create a goal. I'll show you a real example where I've created a goal for my website, okay? So let's go to another Google Analytics. So this is, and other another google analytic account for my website uh nstinfotech.com so here if you if i go on nstinfotech.com here you can see after five seconds i'll you can see a pop-up so when the user end up on this website and after five seconds he or she will have a pop-up like this so if I add my name and email ID, okay. So I'll get a confirmation email. So once I click on that confirmation email, then it will redirect to a thank you page, okay. So I have created a goal. So if I click on admin, so let's, let's first see the goal creation. So goal, and this is the goal newsletter sign up. Description is newsletter sign up. Okay, first I click on template. So newsletter sign up. Okay, then the destination was uh, the name of the goal was newsletter sign up. And destination is a thank you page. And the goal details are thank you page. I have not given any value because it is a newsletter, uh, so we don't require. And I can't verify because I have created this goal like a couple of days back. So I'll require seven days to verify it. This is how I, I have created the goal. To check the conversion, go to the home page. And here you can see you need to click on conversion and goals. And you need to click on overview. So you can see the goals. Okay. So goal completion location, thank you page. And there were two goals which were completed. I mean, there were two users who have signed up. Goal URL. Full URL is thank you page. Uh, funnel visualization, you can see the visualization. Okay, uh, entrance is like uh, one entered from home page and the other user entered from about. I mean, entered from about means the pop up was shown on about page and he or she has subscribed to that goal flow. This is like uh, one user directly typed my website and got a pop-up and submitted the form and other got got the website url from google searched from organic so in this way you can uh, create a goal and you can check in conversion section so you can see all the behavior of the user and 
in this way you can uh, create goals for any product if you sell any product so you can create a goal something like this and you can check it here so i hope you get the concept of creating goals and funnels and this is it for this lecture and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye welcome back to another video in this video we are going to talk about segments in google analytics we will see what are predefined segments and how we can create custom segments so the basic purpose of segment is to create a parallel data from the overall data which we get from google analytics so here if i click on audience and if i click on overview so you can see there is a segment all users so here i'll change the date range uh, i'll select from march 1st to may 19th and click on apply so we can get a good amount of data so here now we you can see there is a 100% users so still we have not created any segment so now let's click on add segment and let's see what kind of options we can have you will see there are some predefined segments and these segments are defined according to their categories so these are their categories and these are these are the segments according to this categories okay so on the basis of these segments you can segment your user so if i select bound session segment you will be able to see how many bounds you had in your website so all these are predefined segments so now let's create a custom segment to create a custom segment we need to click on new segment and here there are five categories on that basis you can create your segment and you need to keep the name according to the category which you have selected for example if i select a category demographics so i need to give a name as demographic segment and then you can select the options here here you can see 100% so right now the data is too less so if i filter any option it will not be get filtered okay so if i click on 25 to 34 you know it shows zero zero users because there is no much data in it so you won't be able to see any changes here you can see only 0% but if i go to behavior and if i select a session which is equal to 5 let's say so the data will change okay so it shows that there was one user who had five sessions on our website he or she visited five times to our website so according to this you can select the options and create a parallel data with the overall data which we have so i'll cancel this and if i click on add segment so there is an option one second let me click on segment new segments there is an option of advanced segment so let me click on condition so you can add conditions so say for example we need the users who have visited our website from mobile device and they have at least achieved one goal okay they have completed one goal so what i'll do is here i'll select device category which is mobile which contains okay which contains mobile so here i need to select user we need data according to the user and not as per the section so device category which contains mobile and we need to add one more filter here i will select uh, goal completion and which is equal to one let's suppose so here you can see the data is now zero but if i put zero here you can see there were seven user who have visited our website through mobile device okay but they have not completed any goal so if i put one so you can see the data is zero because they have not completed the goal so in this way you can have an advanced segment this summary was not so important for me i just wanted to show you how this section works okay i hope you got the concept of segments so this is it for this video and I'll see you in the next video. Till then take care and bye bye. Welcome back to another video. In this video we will see how to integrate Google Search Console in Google Analytics. But before we integrate Search Console in Google Analytics, we will see what is Search Console. So if you type what is Google Search Console, you will find this link. And if I click on this link about Search Console, 
So here it says Google Search Console is a free service offered by Google that helps you monitor, maintain and troubleshoot your site's presence in Google search results. So you can go through this document if you want, but basically Google search helps you to check your website, how it is performing on Google. So now we need to add property in search console. So I'll go to a new tab and here I'll write Google search console. So this is the first link search.google.com. So I need to click on this and here we need to click on start now. So there are two options you can select either you can select domain or you can select URL prefix. So I'll select this and here we need to add our URL. So my URL is best computer chess dot in. So here I'll paste it and I'll click on continue. Here we need to click on go to property. Welcome to new Google search console. Okay, let's click on start. So this is the overview. You can just click on got it and you can cancel this as well. So make sure that the Gmail ID is the same. Uh, which we have used in analytic okay so here you can see my gmail id is same i have logged in through the same gmail id okay now we need to go to settings and here it says ownership verification you are a verified owner so in my case uh, my ownership is verified but if you see that your ownership is not verified then you need to click here okay so additional verification method there are four methods which you can verify your ownership the first one is through html file you can upload an html file to your website okay so if i click on this arrow so here you can download the file and then you can upload uh, through uh, and you can upload it on your website through cpanel okay so this is something very technical so we can ignore this and the second method is html tag so this is simple one i'll show you how to uh, verify your ownership through html tag there are two more options google tag manager and domain name provider but we will see what uh, how we can verify our website through html tag so copy the meta tag below and paste it on your site home page it should go in the head section before the first body section so this is the meta tag for verification so let's copy this tag and now I'll go to my admin section. Uh, my website is uh, on WordPress. So here uh, I am in my plugin section and I clicked on add new. So here I have installed one plugin which is header and footer script. Okay, I have already installed and activated it. So if your website is on WordPress so you can do the same you can go to plugin section and click on add new plugin and you can search for header and footer script and this is the plugin which you need to install and activate okay so once this is activated you can go to settings and here there's an option for header and footer script so you need to click on this here in the header you need to paste that meta tag okay and we need to click on save settings once this is saved then again we need to come here and we need to verify this so let's click on verify so verification successful so you are a verified owner html tag successfully verified so in this way you can verify the ownership so once this is done you need to go to google analytic account and here you need to click on acquisitions and here you can see the option of search console so let's click on this and let's click on landing page so here you can see there is no data because we have still not linked our search console to our google analytics account so if you click on any option you will not find the data okay if you click on queries you will not find the data so you can set up your search console data sharing from here but there is one more option where you can 
connect both this platform, which is admin. So once I click on admin, so in this section, you can find all products. So you need to click on all products and you can see there are different products of Google here, but we need search console. So at the bottom, there is search console. So here we need to click on link search console. So once you click this, you will end up on this page and you need to click on add. It will ask you to verify the Gmail ID. So I am using this Gmail ID for my search console as well as for my analytics. So I'll click on next. So if you are using different Gmail ID for search console, so you need to select that, but I'll recommend use the same Gmail ID. Okay. So here I need to enter my password. So here it says enable search console data in Google Analytics. Web property is best computer chess link site. This site is not linked to any web property in Google Analytics account. So there is one only one option which is uh, best computer chess dot in. So if you have multiple websites, so the, uh, it will show you multiple options. So you need to select which website you want to connect. Okay. So I wanted to connect best computer chess dot in and here. I will click on save. Okay, so click on OK. So now if I go to Google Analytics and if I click on done. Okay, so let's click on save. It is giving a message of success. So now we have connected our search console in Google Analytics. So let's go to home. And now let's click on acquisition. And here we need to click on search console and then we can click on landing page. So now you can see uh, first uh, there was no data, but still uh, it is showing no data because right now we have connected and it will take some time to fetch the data. Okay. So if I click on queries, so this is very important queries. So here you can see the keywords, uh, which keyword is uh, ranking on Google. So this is very important section. Okay. For the queries, I'll show you one more uh, Google analytic account uh, where, where I'll show you the keyword, which are ranking for my website. But before that, let's see what email I got. Okay, improve search console. Okay, so you will also get this kind of email is now associated with Google Analytics Analytics property best computer chess. Okay, so this is a confirmation from Google that it is now connected. So I'll go to my other G, uh, Google Analytics account. So this is my website uh, nstinfotech.com and here if I click on acquisition and if I click on search console, and if I click on queries, so now uh, these are the keyword which are ranking. Suppose uh, this is the keyword and if I copy this, so here you can see there are three clicks, impression of 14 and the CTR is 21.43% means click through rate. So if I go on new tab and if I search this keyword, so this is the first uh, it shows on the first page. Okay, if I click here. So my uh, keyword is ranking on the first page and I'm getting this clicks. Okay, so I, till now I got three clicks. Similarly, these are the keywords which are ranking, uh, but there are no clicks for this keyword, but you can see in queries, uh, the keywords which have been uh, doing well or not doing well on Google. Okay. So if I click on landing page, so you can see your data here as well. So these are the pages uh, impression. Uh, this URL, this page is having this much of impression. This page is having this much of impression. Okay. So all the data, see click is also there. How many clicks you, you get? Okay. Here you can see 10 clicks. So in this way, you can analyze the data through search console. So if I go back to my account, so in this way, we have connected the search console in our Google Analytics account. 
and you don't need to come here and you need to check the performance you can directly check it from here so this is it for this lecture and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye welcome back to another video in this video we will see how to create custom alert for that we need to go to admin and here there is an option custom alert so we need to click on that and here we need to click on new alert and we need to give a name of alert so i'll write traffic alert and apply to all website data and period we can select day week and month so i'll select day and i need to click on uh, this uh, it says that send me an email when this alert triggers so once this goal is achieved or once uh, the goal which i will assign here if it is achieved uh, Google Analytics will send me an email on my email ID, which is uh, bestcomputerchess.in. And if you want to add other emails, you can add it here. Okay. See here it is add new email address. Otherwise, it will send an email to the email address which you have logged in. So this applies to all traffic and I need to uh, create a goal for session, which is greater than 1000. Okay so the value should be 1000 you can keep any value you want like if you want your traffic per day 100 so you can keep it 100 but i need my uh, per day traffic should be greater than 1000 okay so now i'll click on save alert so now this alert is saved so once my website traffic will be greater than 1000 uh, i'll get an alert from google analytics that my traffic is more than 1000 so this means that i do not need to check every day what is my traffic per day okay so every day you don't need to log in to your google analytics and check the uh, traffic so once that goal is achieved you will get an email so in this way you can create alerts different different alerts for your goals so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye